Hi everyone, g'day from Down Under again and I'm with the wonderful Sally Estlin and I'm Harry Armitage, the learning difficulty expert. How are you, Sal? Good, thanks Harry. It's good to see you again, reconnect. We've had a little bit of a break and we're back yeah. on track. <laughs> yeah, we had a break because my mum died and um, well, you know, I've been honouring that and going with the flow of that. And that's that's been a stress for me, big stress. One of the big stresses in life is losing a partner, losing, you know, your, your parents, um, moving house, changing career. They're the big stresses in life that, mm. you know, right up there near 100. So we thought we'd do a topic again on stress because it is so pervasive. I mean, everybody's so stressed, aren't they? So everybody has stress. Everybody has stress. It's just how it is. It's one of the number one biggest factors affecting people in the entire world is stress. Yeah. So we thought today we'd talk about ways of handling stress and, and just stress in general. So, mm. um, yeah. So stress is important. We need some stress. I was just about to say that. Spot on. It's, yeah, it's stress. We think of it in a negative term in, in many ways, but it is important to have in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so stress. low levels of stress stimulate us, like you can imagine being <clears throat> locked away in an old people's home where you're not allowed to do anything. That's where you don't have enough stress. So you end up atrophying and getting yeah. old really quick. So that's, but when you have a beneficial level of stress, that's called eustress, EU stress. How do you spell it? EU and then stress. It's called eustress. Oh, right. That beneficial stress. Right. And then when we go up more stress than we can handle, that's what <clears throat> we conventionally term as stress. And that's damaging. Yep, yep. Because you get into fight and flight and you generate stress hormones and that generates chronic disease if it's continuous. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's physical stress, there's chemical stress and there's mental emotional stress. Yeah, yeah. So those hormones are stress, the cortisol that, you know, just constantly yeah. gets flooded into the body when you're in those stress moments. And the yeah. adrenals get depleted with that adrenaline, the, the fight and flight response constantly being in that stress mode. And, and over time, it does deplete the adrenals and um, adrenal fatigue, exhaustion, worn out, burnout, all that sort of thing. And then you get the physical stress of total exhaustion, your hair starts falling out, you know, you get lots of bodily signs from stress. And <laughs> it's, um, yeah, can't Yeah, stress. but I mean, the, you, you probably see this too. We're seeing it in kids. Oh, and you start seeing it with the eczema and, um, you know, skin stuff, you know, and um, and the, the stress for exams from a young age or tests or whatever or mm. the expectations to perform so well and, and the expectations on kids these days to be good at everything. So you've got to be good at sport, good at music, good academically and, you know, it's 24-7. And what about fear of missing out on this? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, that's the whole withdrawal symptoms these days. The stress of like not having your technology or having it taken away, which is harder. What if the Wi Fi is gone? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You've got to turn that off at night. Do you know uh, the, the, a couple of stats here mm -hmm. that the average New York Post found, suggests that in the US, and we follow the US pretty closely, yep. the average uh, person with a smartphone looks at it 80 times a day. Oh, I would absolutely understand that. The average, but the average millennial yep. looks at it 150 times a day. That's that's more like it, I reckon. Yeah. 150. My goodness. So what are we? Are we awake? How many? How many hours would we? Would the average millennial be awake? Oh, they'd so, sleep eight hours, probably. So eight. eight so that's, hours. That's, that's 16 left. Multiplied by 60. So it's 960 minutes divided by 150. It's every six minutes. Every six minutes of their waking hours. <laughs> yeah. That wow. is pretty scary, given that many of them work <laughs> yeah, or yeah. go to uni. I mean, yeah. holy crap. Yeah. That well, it's pretty... smartphones, you know, all my messages come up on here. Mm, mm. Boom, boom. boom. <laughs> I've managed to avoid one of those because I... I wonder about what the radiation does. Yeah, particularly now with the new cellular data, so you don't even need your phone near you. But, um, yeah, it's a good point because it does have the sensors on the back. 
but I it's so it's it's just so beneficial for my line of work and um, mm, mm. understanding the body and how it, um, particularly how much you burn when you're exercising and, and your heart rates and that sort of thing. Yes. In the right zone. Yeah. So how, many I, calories, how many calories have you burned this morning? <laughs> <laughs> well, not enough. I've been seated here. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot per day, sort of. Yeah, a yeah. lot. It's, it's interesting. Now, I've got some stats too. 72 Good. of Aussies uh, admit that stress affects their physical health. So that's mm. say three quarters of people. Sixty-four percent think that it affects their mental health. Now, I would suggest that those stats would actually be higher. That um, stress affects a lot more people. This was just uh, mental health stats, I think, from mental mm, health. Mm, but mm. I mean, that's already saying roughly about three quarters of people feel that stress is affecting them. And I would strongly suggest that that would be higher. But um, there's the physical side with the, you know, the heart attacks, all that sort of stuff relating to stress. Um, but the mental health and, you know, depression, anxiety, that sort of thing is huge, huge. Um, and, you know, 13%, two in five Australians experience some form of depression. And I would suggest that's probably even higher. So that's mm. nearly half the population. Mm. And, um, you know, 13% of that group of extreme depression, like, you know, the serious warning levels. Mm. One of the best things for people in that group is a really cool app developed at Monash and Swinburne yep. called Mood Mission. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Mood Mission. And what it does is it checks in with you every day, asks you how you're going, and then makes five suggestions. Right. And then the idea is that you do one or two of those suggestions. Maybe, well, you know, even one would be good if you're depressed, you know, to do anything's a challenge. And then the next day it asks how you are again and then how did you go with that yes. suggestion that you took up. So it learns what works for you. Yeah, cool. And it's based on a lot of good science. I'm going to actually slide that one. Yeah. <clears throat> Mood mission, yeah? Really good, yeah. Yeah, cool. cool. And it works. It's not a substitute for going to, you know, a therapist or a psychologist, but it's it's a daily adjunct to help you get out of that black space. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a bit of a dark hole and it can spiral downwards. Very yeah. Quickly. Mm. One of the really sobering things I think is that this the, the impact of stress seems to be hitting the younger generation hardest. Mm. So, you know, 18 to 25 appear to be the most stressed, the most anxious. And and the yeah, causes, you know. Hmm? Did you say 18 to 25? So they're the most yeah, 18 to 25. out of all the age groups. Yes. And, and, yeah, and, and young the, age. the stressors of finance, family and health, you know, yep. the things that stress us all. Yep. And this is impacting on fertility. Yep. There was, um, you know, you probably know, as I do, many, many women who want to have kids who, who struggle. Mm, mm. just to achieve that basic biological urge. And there was a study from the public health school at Louisville in 2015 that showed that stress reduces fertility, you know, big stress, chronic mm. stress, mm. reduces fertility by 45%. Mm. 45%. Really a big deal. Wow. And my favourite book on stress, you know, it talks about this quite a lot. I think I've shown this year before. Why zebras don't get ulcers? Yeah, it's you know, yeah, such yeah. a cool book. Now it's not a light read. It's it's not a light read. I mean, the the references go for dozens and dozens of pages. Yep. The author is a professor of biology and neurology at Stanford. But if you want to understand about stress and what it does, why it happens, who it affects, that's the Bible. Really good book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's lots of ways to counteract stress or to sort of work with it or to try to manage the stress that you have in your life mm -hmm. and i did a little model oh good i love a model can we see it, can we see it? <laughs> <laughs> well it's here but it's too hard to see right so oh, okay. i've got three so if we do a little venn diagram in one of the circles so three circles in there the first one i've put pause so just take time to stop pause breathe and re regroup because when you're busy, 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 living with high stress, all that sort of stuff, sometimes, you, well, you literally need to just stop and pause. And then 
The next one I said is be present, live in the present moment. Stop stressing about events of the past or what's happening in the future because we can only control the present moment. So be present and live in the present moment. And then my third one was let's prioritise, let's prioritise what's important and let go of the stuff that's not, that really at the end of the day isn't worth stressing about. You know, choose your poison, I like to say. So if you pause and are present, you end up being more productive because you're more clear and more focused. And when you're more present, living in the present moment, and prioritise what's important, you have more energy because you're not expending all this extra energy <laughs> stressing about the things that aren't even worth stressing about half the time. And then when you start prioritising things in life and do stop and pause, you actually have a simpler life. And so overall, you have less stress. Do you like that one? I do. You've, you've gone further than I have. <coughs> and you've got um, a pause, present, prioritise. I like that. That's good. Mm. You've done some good work this so. Oh, I know. I might turn my brain on this morning, Harry. <laughs> yeah. So, so my, my model, which is much simpler than yours, was the, the first thing to do is chat. For goodness sake, reach out and talk to someone. Yep. Absolutely important. Next one is care for yourself. So, you know, move daily, eat well and sleep enough. <clears throat> and the third one is change your life in the long term. Yes. Engineering out those stresses that overwhelm you and are damaging you. We, we can't engineer out the stresses in the short term, but we can in the long term. All have choices. Yeah. Mm. It's... Sorry, on. And with those choices, you know, I mean, pe people forget <clears throat> that they have, they can choose. Yep. They can choose. Sometimes you're in a destructive relationship. Even if you've got kids, well, you have choices. Sometimes you're in a destructive situation at work where you've got a boss who's bullying you. You have choices. It, I am so passionate about choice because mm. it, everything is a choice and it's your choice and this is your life. So it's the mm. life that you choose. So your choices are very, very important. Now, I, I found some um, tips from the mental health group um, that yeah. are very much in line with what we're about and some of them we've already mentioned, but they, ways of dealing with stress. One, try something new, do something differently. Mm. To mm. Live in the present moment, which is what I already had, you know, mm. because we spend so much time stressing about what, what if in the future and what was in the past, what was mm. if was, and we can't change the past and we can't predict the future. So we can only be present. And when we truly feel into that, we can truly allow that anxiety to be waylaid because we can only manage the now, not, not tomorrow. So, and all, and all of the stuff you worry about never happens. I know. Or you cause it to happen through the law of attraction because you're attracting it in with those negative thoughts. Very much about <laughs> positivity and, and, you know, being grateful for what we do have allows us to live in the present moment with less stress. So mm. that gratitude of the experiences that you've had that have shaped you to where you are now and, and being grateful for what you do have and then you're not wanting for all this other stuff in the future. Mm. So I'm big on gratitude. But that wasn't one of their tips. Reach out before things get tough. And that's one thing a lot of us don't do is just use our voice, you know, talk, talk about it or, or say to someone, I'm sinking or I need some help. I really am. I found a stat somewhere before 51% of people just don't seek help from others when they really need mm. it. So mm. that's one in two of us. And I'm sure that's actually even higher. Um, sleep. This is another one that I was going to talk about. Sleep, diet, exercise, nutrition. All of these are really important to help manage your stress as well. A healthy diet, getting that exercise, keeping moving, um, you know, healthy thoughts. Meditation is super, super important. Mm. And you said before, and one thing I'm big on too, is make time for you. So take that time to stop and build in something that you enjoy. So it might be going mm. for a walk or it might be some meditation or it might be watching a movie or whatever. Um, listening to but music. Better, better if it's not a substance abuse. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, yes. So there's positives and negatives. And I've got a little list of positive ways of dealing with stress and negative ways. It's too easy. Um, another one would be physical. We've had that. Recharge every day, which is part of taking time for you. Just to mm. reboot. M might be a meditation. Or it might be just, you know, lying on the bed for five minutes or on your magnetic um, mm. 
little thing, seven minutes, isn't it, that you need to do that per day? And and as you said before, talk with old friends, like sense of community. Sporting groups or group fitness classes are great because you just come together. There's a lady that's going through a very challenging time with a husband who's very ill with cancer, but she's religiously at our group fitness classes. She says, don't talk to me because I'm going to burst into tears, but I'm just here. I need the energy. I need that support to help me manage what's going through. I did my entire divorce, including all the lawyers, whatever's, doing group fitness classes in the breaks. I'd just be texting and then oh. going to bash it all out, boxing in in between. It was really good way of managing stress. <laughs> and then the final suggestion was visualise something positive, which is yeah. good. You know, it's having those positive thoughts that things will be okay or having something on your screen shot on your phone or something that inspires you, something that you want to create or, or takes you to a happy place. So, yeah, they were just some tips that's very much... I, I, you know, I think movement is just so important. So important. It so generates important. good feeling of well-being. Yeah, yeah, it gets the circulation, great for elimination. Absolutely. And mental health, oh, my goodness. From walking right through to some whatever floats your boat. It might be boxing or whatever. Mm. But, I mean, we both walk every day and it's it's really good, isn't it? Mm. Really mm. good. He, you know those pictures you've got on Facebook of you doing the kicking? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. When did you do those? I do them every day. but um, yeah. every day. That's most impressive. <laughs> yeah, jumping front kicks is, is my thing. That's why my yeah. picture is a jumping front kick. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. I don't know my frustration. Roundhouse back kicks and jumping front kicks, they're my thing. Yeah. Watch out. I didn't, even know what, I didn't even know what they were called. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm a black belt, baby. That's what happens. <laughs> now, some other, um, I found some other stats. 86% of people as stress relief options like to watch TV, movies or Netflix. So majority of people find that relaxing. And I'm not sure that I'm not sure that's such a good strategy, actually, just sitting and watching passively. Well, it's just being, isn't it? It's just being still. I think that's important because... Mm. I find even though walking is good, I will over-exercise to de-stress and sometimes you just actually need to be still and not further stress the body physically. So, but yes, everything in balance though. We don't need to... You're probably quite unusual in that respect. You'd be a small proportion, you know. Most people, I think if they get stressed and then end up, you know, drinking a bit, smoking, watching the TV for hours. They, Eating you know, they food. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's throw in some corn juice. Overeating, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and then... The balance, yeah, well. you're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> drinking, smoking, gambling, bad food, all that sort of stuff. But um, uh, what else would they do? Music, reading, eating well with friends. Um, oh, and as before I said, the stats, half of people don't ask for help. And those that do out of that half, only a quarter seek help from the family. 90% of those go to the GP and only 10% go to a psychologist. So mm. we're still like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, still being stoic, I can deal with it. When it's mm. it's a lot better to, to have a voice and just be open because odds are someone else is going through the same shit at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And a problem show, shared is often a problem solved. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm. We share a lot, don't we, Harry? Yeah, you do. You do. You're a good listener, mate. <laughs> oh, no, I was just so empathised. Um, yeah, anyway, do. I had some suggestions some, which were very much in line with the model of ways to handle stress in your life. Yeah, I think yeah. super duper important is stop, pause and breathe. Breathing helps you reconnect, gets you grounded, breathing in through the nose, holding it and then breathing out through the mouth. Just really, it's like when kids fall over, you say take three deep breaths. Helps them just refocus, cut off from the other. Uh, let go and prioritise what's important because seriously, we all have 100 things on our to-do list, but what are the most important that you can get done? The first one, two, and possibly three on your list. Let everything else go. It's like on the catastrophe scale. Really? Is it really that important? Death of a loved one, yes, that's up there. But, you know, not getting your homework in on time, Okay, it's not life or death. It's primary obviously. school homework is pretty much a waste of time. Yeah, <laughs> you've said that a lot. <laughs> Don't let my kids do that. <laughs> um, live they in should watch this. Sh- they yeah. should subscribe to this channel definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I think they do. <laughs> 
live in the present moment because as I said before, truly feeling into just being present, being grateful for what we have, allows you to waylay those fears and anxieties of what has been in the past and what can be in the future. Being present and breathing, you don't, don't have to stress about tomorrow because it hasn't happened yet, only today has. And you have, you have the ability in this present moment to consciously create a future that's more positive. So mm. it doesn't have to be so negative. And then the final part was really practice doing those things that, that help you to reduce your stress because it's just start with simple, small steps, but just keep at it. So start going for a walk or start trying meditating or, or um, you know, taking some time out to have a lie down during the day. It's just start and then keep practicing at it. So the four P's, pause, priorities, prioritize, be present and practice. So, you know, I mean, that's about changing and you building your lifestyle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not something you do part time or for a short time. You have to mm -hmm. do it. But as you say, different. it has to be a choice. You have yeah. to choose to want to do it. Definitely. Otherwise you just stay as you are, stress ridden, bend over, hormones of stress circulating through you, living in survival. Mm. Mm. That's right. An average life, isn't it? And for the young ones watching this, when you make your choices about what to do in your life, what to study, for goodness sake, pick what you love doing. Pick what makes you happy, not the stuff that you think will make you money. It's what you have. Yeah. It's what makes you happy that sustains you. Yeah, that is so spot on. <clears throat> That's what I say to my kids all the time. Find whatever your passion is, align your career with your passion, and then it won't be work. It won't be hard work. Mm. You know, mm. enjoy what mm. you do and you want to study it or want to research further or, or learn more because we've become sponges about things that we're passionate about, don't we, Harry? And it's just, mm. yeah, yeah. It's just our lives. You can never stop learning. Yeah, never stop learning. No, mm. that's right. <laughs> so, and, you know, you mentioned about being in the now. I um, mean, it reminds me of the work of Eckhart Tolle, mm -hmm. you know, and he's, what was that book? The Power of Now, was that his famous book? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great, uh, great thing to read for people if they want to explore how to get into that space and they're having trouble. Because, you know, if you've been stuck in the groove of worrying about what has been and what might be, then it's hard sometimes to live in the present. It is. But if anyone wants any help, just message us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, you know, we've, yeah. we've journeyed through that area ourselves, haven't we, and really worked hard at being present and letting go. And um, it takes practice, but, you know. It does. Yeah, yeah. One of the best bits of advice I got given when I was young and I was a worrier was just think and act at the same time. If there's something you can't affect right now, then there's no point in thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Be a warrior, not a warrior. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and tick off, the bucket. tick off your bucket list. <laughs> Oh, how's your bucket list looking, by the way? It's looking good. The deck's nearly done. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have a summertime reveal. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tim's on the balcony with some of your yeah. beautiful marmalade. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we've covered the topic pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's find that up. It's terrific to chat with you again, Harry. And Yeah, you know, Definitely. I'm Absolutely. Glad. Getting back on track, it's been challenging times. So. And we'll probably see you next week. We'll work out a topic and do it again next week. <laughs> Can't wait. All right, okay. baby. I'll catch you then. See ya. See you then. Bye. <laughs>